Are you interested to know how an AC electric vehicle charger works? Okay, then see this video from start to end. This video is made by 45 years experienced IIT engineer. Oh yes, electric vehicle charging technology is quite advanced. So this video will not only deal with the technology, but also you'll know how to build an AC electric vehicle charger in practice. Let's begin. Electric vehicles are powered by an electric motor instead of a gasoline engine. Motors are run by batteries. Electric vehicle batteries are different from the gasoline-based automobiles which uses SLI batteries, starting, lighting, and ignition. The electric vehicle batteries are designed to give power over prolonged periods of time so that the vehicle can run a long distance without recharge. Deep cycle high ampere hour capacity batteries are used instead of SLI batteries for EV applications. The battery in an electric vehicle must deliver power to drive the electric motor. Lithium ion batteries are used in electric vehicles due to their high energy density, high power density, long lifespan and environmental friendliness. These batteries are excellent for energy storage solutions. Electric vehicle batteries have different capacities depending on the car manufacturer. Like, Mitsubishi IME EV battery capacity is as low as 16 kilowatts only. Mercedes-Benz EQE 354 Matic battery has a large capacity of 90.6 kilowatts. Electric vehicle charging technology is basically used to charge electric vehicle batteries. It's highly important to take care of the safety factors of battery during charging, as any irregularities can cause the batteries to catch fire. Lithium-ion battery cells combine a flammable electrolyte with significant stored energy, and if a lithium-ion battery cell creates more heat than it can effectively disperse, it can lead to a rapid uncontrolled release of heat energy, known as thermal runaway, that can result in a fire or explosion. So, who will take care safety of the battery? Yes, EV charging technology takes care of the safety of the lithium-ion battery and provides safe and user-friendly charging of the electric vehicle batteries. To understand it better, we must understand the difference between communication and controls in electric vehicle charging. In electric vehicle charging, the charger communicates some of its important parameters to the electric vehicle before and during the charging process. ACEV charger never controls anything of the electric vehicle during charging. Let's see how a 7.4 kilowatts AC EV charger charges an electric vehicle. We all know that batteries can be charged only by DC voltage. So how an AC EV charger will charge the battery? Yes, this job is done by an onboard charger, which is a mandatory item in all electric vehicles. The figure one below will give you an idea about onboard charger. This is an onboard charger, a built-in feature in EV charger. It is connected to a 7.4 kilowatts EV charger through a trailing cable. Type 2 female plug will be engaged to the Type 2 male socket at the electric vehicle. The onboard charger converts AC power to DC power to charge the battery of the electric vehicle. The BMS, battery management system, of onboard charger takes care of the safety factors of electric vehicle battery during charging. The AC charger has to communicate some charging parameters with the electric vehicle before charging can start. The capacity range of an electric vehicle's onboard charger OBC is from 3.6 kilowatts to 22 kilowatts. The OBC's capacity determines the maximum charging rate when the vehicle is connected to an AC charger. So, manufacturers are making electric vehicles having varied ranges power ratings for OBC and EV charger manufacturers have varied capacities of chargers. So, where is the matching and how both electric vehicle and charger capacity can be matched? This matching is done by the electric vehicle through its BMS, battery management system, of the OBC. 
But to do this accurately, EV must know the capacity of the charger before the charging cycle is initiated. Means EV must communicate and talk to the charger throughout the process of charging. Since both are machines, this communication is done by standard digital technique. There are several powerful digital techniques available for this purpose like PWM, pulse width modulation, CAN bus and PLC, power line communication, which are used for machine-to-machine -machine communication. AC charging standard communication protocol is PWM, whereas CAN bus and PLC is used for DC chargers. The PWM communication is called pilot wire communication, where wave pulses are generated to communicate between electric vehicle charger and electric vehicle. Electric vehicle charger must generate a steady PWM signal of plus 12 volt, zero and minus 12 volt at a frequency of one kilohertz and duty cycle proportional to the maximum charging current available. Figure below shows a PWM signal for a 7.4 kilowatts AC EV charger. The figure shows a PWM signal of 53.3% duty cycle. Pulse width is modulated as per maximum available current at the EV charger. The formula to calculate duty cycle is shown in the figure. PWM pulse positive amplitude is modulated to plus 9 volt and plus 6 volt to communicate different phases during charging. When EV charger type 2 plug is fully engaged to the electric vehicle type 2 socket, the PWM positive amplitude will be plus 9 volt. When the electric vehicle will be ready to accept AC charging voltage, the positive amplitude of PWM will be changed to plus 6 volt. To commence charging, EV charger must be connected to electric vehicle. Charger has a female type 2 connector which will be engaged to the male type 2 socket at the electric vehicle. This Type 2 socket has 7 pins, out of this, 5 pins are used for single-phase charging and all the 7 pins are used for 3-phase AC charging. When used in single-phase charging, 2 pins are used to establish PWM communication, 2 pins are used to deliver AC power to the vehicle OBC for charging and 1 pin is connected to common earth. We'll deal with the pin configurations details shortly. In case of AC charging, the charger will communicate with the EV and when permitted by the EV, it will just deliver the required AC power to the onboard charger of the EV. Charging start, charging operation and charging stop will be completely controlled by the EV. The charger will not control anything of the onboard charger of EV. However, charger can stop charging in case of any problem. Let's find out Type 2 connector's pinout and relevant details as shown in this figure. Type 2 connector is exclusively used for AC charging. Out of 7 pins, 3 pins PP, P and CP are used to establish digital communication between charger and EV and the other 4 pins N, L1, L2, L3 are used to transfer AC charging power to the EV. In case of AC single phase charging. N will be connected to neutral and L1 has to be connected to live of the 230V AC supply. Remember, for single phase operation, N and L1 is to be used and L2 and L3 should never be used. PE is connected to panel earth and to GND negative common of 12V SMPS or in other words, PE acts as the reference pin for CP and PE. The DC 12 volt SMPS supplies power to all cards. Now we'll explain the charging operation in steps. Above figure is an equivalent circuit drawn to understand the theory behind electric vehicle charging. Let's understand this figure first. The left green block is the EV charger equivalent circuit, and the right blue block is the vehicle or EV equivalent circuit. The actual circuit is much more complicated and equivalent circuits are drawn to understand the circuit operation and to calculate important electrical parameters during operation. The pilot wire communication is performed by three connections, PP, PE, and CP of the Type 2 plug and socket. Charger side, PE is connected to earth of charger. 
PEV cannot be connected to Earth as it stands on insulated tires and so EV gets the Earth connection through charger when plug is engaged. CP is connected through a 1 kilo ohm resistor to a hardware controlled electronic switch which is normally connected to plus 12 volt DC and when required will be connected to PWM signal. PP is the proximity pin. The EVPE pin is connected to earth or ground via resistor RC. The value of RC is standardized as per EVSE current capacity. In case of 7.4 kilowatts, 32A, the value of RC will be 220 ohms, 0.5 watt. CP is the control pilot pin through which charger and EV pilot wire communication is performed. During step one, plug and socket are not engaged, CP voltage level will be plus 12 volt and this state is called state F when PWM is not transmitted. Electric vehicle side, PP is connected to an internal circuit to calculate value of RC which will determine whether the plug is properly engaged or not. PE is connected to common GND of the vehicle electronic circuit. CP is connected to a digital switch S2 via diode D. When S2 is open, it will connect a load of 2.74 kilo ohm in the CP line and when S2 is closed, the load will reduce to 2.74 kilo ohm parallel to 1.3 kilo ohm equals 882 ohms. Now plug and socket is just engaged. Electric vehicle PP gets a closed loop to ground through PE at charger side. This allows a preset current to flow through RC and a pre-designed voltage is dropped across RC. EV measures this voltage to find out whether plug and socket is properly engaged or not. On the charger side, CP gets a closed loop through diode D and 2.74 kilo ohm and so load in this circuit is 2.74 kilo ohm, due to which 3 volt is dropped across R1, 1 kilo ohm, and the voltage level at charger side CP becomes 9 volt. Pilot wire communication is a voltage control system. Charger measures this voltage at CP and if it finds that it is 9 volt plus or minus 10%, it will immediately flip the digital switch S1 to the oscillator side to transmit preset PWM to the CP at the electric vehicle side. This entire operation is being carried out by the control system hardware at the EV charger. Now you can understand that the control system hardware at the EV charger so, this control system hardware must be meticulously designed so that the EV charger operates as per international standard. Now let's enter step 3, plug and socket engaged and initialized. Plug and socket is engaged, the system is now initialized. Means pilot wire communication will commence. As soon as charger system control will find that voltage at CP has become 9 volt, it will flip the digital switch S1 to oscillator side. Now electric vehicle will receive PWM signal at frequency of 1 kHz duty cycle equals 53.3%. The internal digital controls of electric vehicle will read this PWM signal and EV will find out whether its onboard charger is compatible to 32 ampere or not. If it is compatible, then the EV will take the next step in charging. Chart 1 below shows PWM implementation for Type 2 EV charger. Now here is an important feature of EV charging. The EV can use the available 32 ampere or anything less than that, but never more than 32 ampere as the charger will trip at 32 ampere maximum current. The EV charges its battery through onboard charger and the algorithm is CCCV as shown chart minus two below. This CCCV charging algorithm is a built-in feature of the onboard charger and not controlled by the EV charger. The onboard charger will reduce the current when constant voltage stage will arrive. So, the EV decides how much current to draw from EV charger subject to the maximum current capacity of the EV charger. EV charger will never control the current, it will only communicate the EV through PWM signal by pilot wire communication the maximum current capacity. Now let's enter final phase step 4, charging will start.
the EV will read the PWM signal and if it's compatible to its onboard charger, it will make switch S2 on. As soon as S2 is on, the load at CP will reduce to 882 ohms. This will reduce the voltage at CP to plus 6 volt DC. The EV charger will read the voltage and understand that EV has given permission to start the charging process. So, EV charger will connect the AC voltage to the EV and charging will start. The onboard charger of EV will carry out the charging through CCCV method. This means that the charging is entirely controlled by the EV only. As soon as the charging is over, EV will open S2 and the voltage at CP of EV charger will become plus 9 volt DC again. EV charger will understand that charging is completed and it will provide a charge complete signal to the user. The user will now release the charging plug to detach the plug from the EV socket. The PWM signal transmitted by the EV charger fluctuates more than the allowable tolerances, then EV will stop charging and wait for the PWM to stabilize or if it's not stabilized within 30 seconds it will abort charging. So, in practice you must generate a stable PWM signal within the allowable tolerances and this is a tough job. This is the only problem faced by many EV charger manufacturers. However, you can successfully use an ESP32 to generate steady and accurate PWM pulses. We have covered the basic technology of EV charging including step-by-step -step operation of an AC EV charger operation including pilot wire communication. AC EV chargers must do two major jobs. 1A zero error communication with the electric vehicle. 2. AC power transfer during charging. This video has taken care of the first item. In the next video, we'll design the control system in an AC electric vehicle charger to make you understand how AC power is transferred from electric vehicle charger to electric vehicle. Please read the description given below to know more about this subject. I hope this video will be useful to professionals engaged in design of electric vehicle chargers. The video is explained in simple language so that even engineering students are able to understand the technology behind AC electric vehicle charger. Should you require any clarifications, please visit my website. Links are provided in the description. If you like the video, you should subscribe and take a few seconds to click the I like it clip art. Thanks to all readers.